health 80 is. 12 over 8. Alright, so again, start by creating your factor trees for the numerator and the denominator, 12 and 8. Okay, Brianna, break down 12 for me. Give two numbers and multiply together and 12. Six and two. Six and two is a good choice. Alright, two is prime, but six isn't. Six can be broken down how, Christian? Six can be broken down as three and two. Good. That's all primed out then. All right. Now I've got to break down eight. Uh, Chris, two numbers to multiply together to make eight. Eight and ten is a good choice. Neither are prime, but it's one of the quicker ways to get to the prime numbers. Eight, Shelly, is going to break down as what? Four and two. Four and two. And four is going to break down what is what, Alex? Sure. And two. All right. Now I've only primed out the left branch. I've still got to prime the right branch, even though it should be pretty easy. Ten is going to prime out as what? Five and two. Five and two. Mm -hmm. All right. So, got step one finally done. So now I'm going to go ahead and write the factorization in ascending order. Over here, I've got 2 times 2 times 3. Over here, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. Right. Circle the likes. So I've got a set of 2s and another set of 2s. Pick the top of the bottom. Ryan, make the ever difficult decision, pick the top or the bottom. Top, okay. So, I've got a circle two and another circle two. Two times two is four. Four. So now that I know the greatest common factor, I'm going to divide the numerator and the denominator by four. Twelve divided by four is three. 80 divided by 4 is 20. 3 twenties. Okay. Now, as you can see, in example 3 and 4, the directions are the same. They both say reduce. However, the problems look a little bit different. As you can see in these problems, now I've put variables in there. So now we have to take into account how we're going to deal with variables. The steps are a little bit different. Right? As you can see, the first thing says to write out the prime factorization of the numerator and the denominator. Right? So that's where we're going to start. So problem reads 14x cubed over 7x squared y. 14x cubed over 7x squared y. Now, 14, we need a little bit of a factor tree for that. Not too difficult. 14 can only break down one way. 14 is going to break down as what, Caitlin? 7 and 2. 7 and 2. Right, so that part is 2 times 7. Now, hopefully you remember from back in Chapter 4, Section 1, when we're doing the prime factorization of variables, we just take them apart. So instead of writing x cubed, I would write x times x times x, 3x. Now, for the bottom, the number in the denominator is 7. Seven's already a prime number, so I don't need to make a factor tree for that at all. It's just going to stay 7. But i still got to separate the variables x squared is going to become x times x, and y will just be y. That's your starting point. The next step is easy. Once you've done all that, you're going to divide out the common parts. So if there's a number at the top and it's got a match on the bottom, they cancel each other out. So for instance, there's a 7 here on the top, there's a 7 on the bottom. They cancel out. 
X on the top and X on the bottom. They cancel up. X on the top, X on the bottom. They cancel up. This is two times X. Once you've canceled everything out, then you just recombine the things that are left. So in the top, I've got two left, an X left. That's two X. On the bottom, I just have Y. So it's just Y. Now, you conceivably could use that same method in examples one and two if you wanted to. Right? You could do the prime factorization, which you have to do anyway, cancel out, recombine. You could do it that way, too, if you wanted to. First, I think that's a little more work, but you do what you want. All right, so let's try that again over here in example four. In example four, I've got 